Now let's go back and implement a new version of the patient class, but this time we'll make it so that we can specify a name, an age, and a malady when the patient is created. And we'll accomplish this using the underscore underscore init underscore underscore method. And I'll drop saying the underscore underscore. So I'll just call this the init method. And when we use the dir function to look at what was in the Madonna patient object, we saw that there was this init method. But that is just a, a placeholder. There's nothing really that Python puts in it. It's up to us to say what this init method should do. And we do that by giving this method in our class statement. And it turns out whenever an object is created, Python will take whatever arguments were provided in the creation of that object and pass it along to this init method. It should be a bit more clear how this method is used once we write the code and actually demonstrate its use. Don't worry too much about this object-oriented programming stuff. We're just trying to provide here a peek under the hood of what goes on with object-oriented programming. And after this set of videos, we won't be creating classes of our own. Let me open a new window here where we'll create a new patient class. And the first thing in here is we will define the init method. The first argument to all these methods is self. The next one will say, hey, are you going to give us a name? And if so, we'll use that. But if you haven't given us a name, let's just go with Jane Doe as a default name. How about an age? Let's give it a default value of 0. And then a malady, let's go with a default string of healthy. And that's the header of our init method. What we do is we'll assign the attribute of name to the object itself. And we assign it the value of name, whatever that formal parameter of name was that was passed into this method. For self, its age will be whatever age was passed into this method. And then self.malady will be whatever malady was passed into this method. That is the init method. We'll leave it at that. The self.attribute is different than the identifier on the right side of those equal signs. So the right side has a formal parameter identifier something that was passed into this method. Then on the left side of the assignment operator, we have self, which is an object dot attribute. Two different things. Stated slightly differently in these assignment statements, we have an identifier on the right. Think of that as a standalone variable. Now we see that same identifier being used on the left of the assignment operator, but there it's an attribute. It's part of the object. So that standalone variable is something that's different from the attribute of an object. But using the same identifier in both contexts is very common. Now let's add a couple more methods. Let's go with the display method that we had before. So this just had a single argument of self, the object itself. And what we had before was print the string name is equal to and then whatever the name of the object is, we had print age is equal to, and that's a string, and then taking the age attribute of the object, and then printing the string malady is equal to, and then self dot malady, the self object's malady attribute. And let's give one more method here. Let's write a method called set malady. The first argument is self, so Python will always pass as the first argument, the object itself. And then the second one, let's have a formal parameter name of malady, and let's give it a default value of healthy, the string healthy. And all this method does is say self.malady, you are equal to whatever that formal parameter malady is. OK, that's it for this patient class. And let's save it to a file. Let's call this patient underscore v2 dot py. Now that's been saved. And let's run it, function key f5. 
Now that this patient class is defined, let's put things to the test. Let's create a patient called Bob. He has a name of Bob Dylan, an age of 71, and maybe a tin year. So that seemed to work. At least we got no errors. Let's ask Bob to display himself, and there he is. Now he goes into our hospital, and maybe they patch him up so he's good to go. How about we invoke the set malady method with no arguments? Now, what does Bob look like? So I'll recall that display method, and now he's healthy. But how about while he was in the hospital? He fell in love with one of the doctors, but unfortunately for him, she was spoken for. So now he might be broken hearted. Did that work? If we display Bob, we see that you know, his name, his age haven't changed, but his malady is now broken hearted. Let's try another thing. Let's go with Jane and say she is a patient, but she wouldn't tell us her name, but we did get the fact that her age was 23. So Jane, what do you look like now? There she is, Jane Doe. The default value for the name. The age is 23, and we haven't yet discovered her malady, so she remains healthy. Okay, that's a brief introduction to how we can create classes of our own, but we typically aren't going to be doing that here. Although we won't be creating classes of our own, we do want to access the features of object-oriented programming that Python provides for us, so we want to have available all that power.